Hi folks, welcome to Lakeside Landing. My name is Sebastian, I'm your host, and uh, I just thought I'd put together this little instructional video to uh, familiarize uh, yourself with the pontoon boat. Um, so obviously by now you've already uh, seen that the keys for the boat are located on the stove. And so you're gonna go ahead and grab those keys and come on down here to the boathouse. And you're going to um, use the boat lift to put the boat in the water. And the way that's done is by um, taking the handle over here and moving it to the left. That's going to put the pontoon in the water. And it's imperative that uh, you don't start the, um, the engine until the propeller is completely submerged in the water. Um, you can't start the engine with the engine out of the water. It needs the water for uh, cooling. So right now, as you can see, the uh, propeller is in the water. Um, you see the boat's rocking, so it's just about good enough, but not quite. Um, so we're going to continue to lower it. And once the boat really starts rocking, you know that it's being supported by the water instead of the uh, lift. And that's when it is okay to stop the lift. So we're going to go ahead and board the boat here. First thing you do is you come over here to this side of the boat. And you have a little switch over here that is for the battery. Uh, that should be located in the up and down position when you get on the boat. Um, you have to take this and rotate it that way. That engages the battery. Um, and you come over here to the helm. Um, you have to insert the safety key. It's like a jet ski if you've ever driven one. You have to take the safety key and it's sort of underneath the red tab. Make sure it's in neutral. Make sure that the engine tilt is down all the way. This is what you use to tilt the uh, engine up and down. Obviously that's forward and that's reverse on the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Now you start it. We have this uh, Garmin GPS. This is where all your information is located. Um, let's let that get up. Uh, your radio here, that's gonna be self-explanatory. Um, these are your navigation lights and your horn, it's located okay here. And uh, although the nighttime use is not authorized due to uh, insurance purposes, um, you do have navigation lights here if you do wanna use them during the day. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring up the fact that um, it's, a, it's imperative that this is not used at night. Uh, it has to be on the dock uh, before sunset. Uh, like I said, I'm not insured for nighttime use. Um, I have to include this and say that anybody who does try to violate that policy and use it at night, you will surrender your entire $500 security deposit for the boat. Um, I'm sure we won't have any problems with that, uh, but I just did need to say that. Um, we do have tilt wheel here. It goes up and down. And here comes the Garmin. So, I think I'm gonna to return to you. Uh, I'm gonna get this thing off the, uh, out of the slot. We're gonna go out to the middle of the lake and then I'm gonna to demonstrate to you uh, how to maneuver the boat and how to get it back up on the dock and the functions of the Garmin GPS. All right, folks, uh, we're here on the lake and uh, in addition to showing you some uh, maneuvering uh, of the boat, I'm going to now focus on the um, pertinent parts of the uh, GPS system. So the GPS system here uh, is responsible for all of the gauges. Uh, it also has the charts and the GPS. Um, and this is how you find out if the gas tank is full or not. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that to you. Um, so you go to, you go to the uh, home page, home. Now you're on the settings. Go to gauges, go to engine. And you can see we have a full tank of gas. Um, it's imperative that you always return it with a full tank of gas. It's much like uh, the rented car. You'll get it with a full tank of gas and you have to return it with a full tank of gas. Um, otherwise, uh, your security deposit will be charged uh, to fill up the tank. Um, and then uh, you have the RPMs here. And this is the uh, trim position. So I have it trimmed out perfectly right now um, for when you're at full speed. Um, if you'll notice, it's halfway between um, three quarters all the way down and uh, midway. So that's where you want it if you want to have optimal uh, trim. So you'll notice when you go up, that's going up. When you go down, it's going down. Right about there is where you want it for your optimal trim when you're at full speed. 
Um, if we go back here, we're going to go into um, charts, navigation charts. So here's the whole lake. This is all Lake Tillery. Um, you can uh, scroll through. You can uh, rotate it. So here is the South Dam. Okay, this over here is Lily's Bridge Marina. It's the last big opening to your left as you're going down the lake this direction to the south. That's where you're going to be getting your fuel. Um, you'll see the history. You see the tracks here. If you just follow this, people are always going to Lily's Bridge Marina. So if you just follow those tracks, you'll always find the marina down south side on the left, the last big opening. Um, and you could uh, go through here and you could change... Uh, you could change how it looks. Um, it'll tell you, let's see, go back. It'll go to uh, combos, combo one. You got six different combos here. So that's your map, that's your uh, 3D map. And over here you got your uh, speed, uh, your heading, the water temperature, and the depth, which is important when you're going into coves. This is a screen I would have up if I'm going into a cove so that I would know what the depth is, if you need to raise your propeller or not. Um, so that's pretty much, um, all I'm gonna tell you about this, um, each individual as they get in there and screw around with it, you'll become more, become more comfortable with it. Uh, the radio, like I said, is self-explanatory for anybody who has a Bluetooth radio. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Okay, over here we have the collapsible bimini top. Um, so if this happens to be on the cover, um, then you're just gonna zip it off and you're gonna store it underneath one of the seats. Um, if it's off, then you don't have anything to worry about. You just um, take these and you pull them out of the clips here and it extends and then these clips here get put into these knobs over here. Um, now I do want to reiterate here uh, one time that one of the most important things if you don't remember anything else is you cannot pull this boat back onto my dock with the bimini top up. It will rip the bimini top off. Ask me how I know been done twice. It's a $2,500 bimini top and uh, I don't want to see anybody rip that off. So just make sure that when you're coming back to the dock, the bimini top is down. It will not fit. It'll uh, hit the overhead. Um, over here, we have the light vests. Everything that you need to be Coast Guard compliant is down there. If you bring your own water skis, they'll fit down there also. Um, I want to mention if you guys, if you got anybody does decide to pull a rope behind the boat, if you bring your own tube, um, you're doing that at your own risk. Um, it's very easy to get those uh, cords, or I should say uh, ropes, stuck in the propeller, which is a nightmare. So if you do uh, pull a tube, please monitor your rope position at all times, especially, especially when going in reverse. Over here is your Coast Guard compliance kit. This has got every, if the Coast Guard aboard you or uh, the local sheriff's office, and they ask you if you have A, B, C, D, E, everything is in this kit. Uh, the throwable is the white square, the throwable flotation device. Um, you have life vests and the throwable white square flotation device down there. And this is everything else here. Uh, uh, your first aid kit, your beacon, your um, uh, flares, uh, just it's all in one kit. So this has got everything to be Coast Guard compliant. And that is in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to maneuver the boat. This is very simple. Um, so we're going forward now. The engine started. It's very quiet. So you just very gently move forward. And it's just like a car. Now turning to the left. And when you want to put it in reverse, you first go to neutral. You hear it. You'll hear it. Go into neutral. Once it's in neutral and the engine is idled again, now it's safe to go into reverse. You'll hear it engage. That's reverse. Going back. Okay. Going forwards. And I'm going to pick back up with you when we get back to the dock, and I'm going to show you some tricks on how to get this into the dock. Okay, folks, this is my dock here. I just wanted to point out that on the right-hand side, you'll see two dock whips. Um, if you don't want to continuously go in and out, in and out into the dock area, it's very convenient just to pull up to the right side of the dock there and uh, use the dock whips to tie yourself up for you know an hour or two hour break. Um, again, with the bimini top, um, as you're pulling into the dock whips, if you have your bimini top up, the dock whip will also 
hit the bimini top and it will uh, rip the dock whip out of the out of the dock and we don't want that to happen so when you're going into uh, the dock lift and when you're pulling up to the dock whips make sure that the um, canopy top is in the down position when you come in and approach the dock you have to judge which way the current's going today we don't have much current but sometimes there's a swift left or swift right current depending on uh, the day and the wind um, so today we're pretty much just going to line up straight in. If, the dock, if it was coming from the right, you're going to line up to the right and try to sort of crab your way into the, into the dock area. But you really, you really want to um, approach at a very slow speed. And optimally, you'll have a person on the front left and the front right to help guide you in. I don't have that today. So I sense a little bit of a right to left current, so I'm starting to move it over to the right so it can push me to the left. And you'll notice how slowly I'm bringing it in. Right now, you would normally have somebody on the front, left and right, to grab those posts, which I don't have today. So I'm gonna have to do it myself. So I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna line myself up. And just, at this point here, you're in neutral, just pull yourself in. You can see as I'm doing now, I'm just pulling myself in. Like I said, you'll usually have somebody on the front, left and right, and somebody be manning in neutral as you're coming in. And that's it. Okay. Okay, so after you've pulled the boat all the way up into the lift, um, you'll have maybe about a foot before the end of the... The bay opening is about where you want to be. Um, you're going to go ahead and get have somebody come out of the pontoon and make sure that each outer pontoon is straddling the wood um, lift. And then you're going to lift the boat out of the water until it stops rocking. It usually takes about two minutes uh, until it's completely out of the water. Of course, you got to make sure that the engine is off so that when the propeller is out of the water, you're not running it with no water. So at this point, this is comfortably sitting in the cradles on the left and the right side of uh, the lift. And we're all set. You're gonna come back into the boat. By the way, to open this door, you lift. That's how to open all doors on this. The rear and the two sides. So you're gonna come in the boat. You're going to turn it off. You're gonna take this out. And you're in the neutral position. Um, there's really no need. Um, to disconnect the battery and uh, turn the switch off. Um, my uh, maintainer will come and he'll do that after each rental. Um, so uh, I believe that that's everything that you need to know to safely operate the boat. Um, if you have any questions, I'm available at 631-445-3391. Thank you for your patience and for listening to this video. Um, you guys enjoy your time here on Lake Tillery and that's it.